the battery energy storage system at Moss Landing caught fire again. And unfortunately, I expect this won't be the last time. In Monterey County, California, a massive blaze destroyed over 80% of the battery energy storage system at Moss Landing. Now, I already did a big video on this when it first happened. But then, about a month later, on February 18th, 2025, the facility reignited. This incident has raised serious concerns about safety, environmental contamination, and the long-term viability of the site. This video is sponsored by BlazeStack Fire Investigation Software. BlazeStack is a fully featured fire investigation case management platform that arson and fire investigators rely on to log, document, and report fire investigations. Get a free trial at blazestack.com and request a quote using the discount code STASHED. The latest fire happened last Tuesday and firefighters were able to contain that fire by the following morning. Even though local officials stated that the air quality was okay, there were no hazardous levels detected, many local residents remained concerned. They were advised to close windows and doors as a precaution, stay inside. But some in the area, they've been reporting ongoing health issues. These health issues, they didn't just appear overnight. They've been struggling with health issues since the original fire. In response, a grassroots study was conducted to examine metal contamination. And I covered that in depth in a recent video. Even though the grassroots study found what appeared to be high levels of contamination on surfaces, county testing suggests there's no significant contamination in the surrounding soil. Air monitoring has also shown no elevated risk, indicating no immediate health concerns. However, this data does not account for long-term exposure and further research is needed in this area. One major challenge with this facility is that not all of the lithium-ion batteries were destroyed in the fire. Some still contain stranded energy, posing ongoing fire risk. Compromised cells remain on site, trapped under the collapsed roof and exposed to rain, fog, and salt spray. All those factors could further destabilize the situation. Officials have warned that these environmental conditions could trigger additional flare-ups, especially since the facility remains partially intact. Given these risks, I really do anticipate more flare-ups in the future. To make this site safe and prevent future fires, the facility needs to be fully decommissioned, a lengthy and complex process. The first step is stabilizing the building, the actual structure itself, which will require structural engineers to assess the damage and contractors to shore up weakened areas to prevent further collapse. Once the site is deemed safe for entry, fire investigators will begin their work to determine the cause and origin of that fire. Only after that can the battery removal and disposal process begin. This involves carefully extracting the remaining battery modules and either shredding or overpacking them to mitigate the risk of further thermal runaway events. This won't happen quickly. I estimate it will take at least six months before investigators can even enter the site, and likely another six months before the battery removal process begins. That means you're looking at about a year before the actual removal process even starts. A useful comparison? The Otay Mesa battery fire from May of 2024. Stabilization efforts took months, and now, nearly a year later, battery removal is just now beginning. The lengthy process underscores the complexity of dismantling large-scale energy storage sites and the challenges emergency responders and facility operators face when dealing with lithium-ion battery fires. I was recently asked how battery energy storage system fires compare to events like Three Mile Island. Number one, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges. But in some ways, I believe the Moss Landing fire was even worse. While Three Mile Island was a major nuclear incident, it ultimately had limited environmental impact. Yet it completely stalled progress in the nuclear industry for a decade. I would say progress is still pretty slow. The Moss Landing fire, on the other hand, it has already led to serious, significant concerns about safety, environmental contamination, and long-term viability. If a nuclear accident with minimal fallout could halt an entire industry, what impact will repeated large-scale battery fires have on the future of energy storage? As the decommissioning process unfolds, I'll continue monitoring the situation, and I'll look into what is going on, especially if there are more potential flare-ups. Let me know in the comments below, what does the future of battery energy storage look like? Is it viable given the risks, or should alternative solutions be explored?